All right, guys, let's get into the grand finals of KSL 13. We got a hero in the bottom left of the map, a favorite in this matchup, and a regular mainstay of it. He's up against the man that managed to defeat him in a quick series of very vicious games at the World Championship, Oliveira, who gets here off the back of a narrow, narrow, narrow victory in the semifinals. Oh my lord, that was a crazy series. Um, yeah, uh, obviously you guys will have to watch it to, to check it out. Probably be published on this channel, I would imagine, after this one. Hopefully I schedule it correctly. <laughs> Fingers crossed those who are watching later on YouTube, you're like, yeah, no, it went out in the wrong order, pig. You're an idiot. You, you always do this. Looks like no scout for Oliveira. Just a Reaper opening for now. Interesting that his barracks is rallied backwards. I think that's a mistake. I think he'll fix that up in a second. Looks like it was just rallied to the same spot his command center was. And bring those control groups up on the right side of your screen. Heroes control groups, as always. Uh, amazing. He's got two different probes on one and two for now. All of his next eye on nine. All of his next eye on zero. And he's got his main nexus on five. His natural on six. Those are his recall hotkeys, of course. When he doesn't scout, Hero likes to build a safety shield battery. So he's going to do that right now. He's got an adept coming out. And it's a Stargate build. Stargate build's very popular at the moment. Showtime looking unstoppable with his triple oracle opening. But uh, Hero more likely to play Phoenix Colossus. He's pretty damn solid at that. For those watching live, don't worry. I'll update the title after this game. Thank you for the heads up on that. Reaper is going to attack the shield battery. Shield batteries are very weak structures. Only 300 hit points in total combined shields. And uh, just kind of forces the adept to the low ground. There's a second one out, so if he does jump up there, he is in trouble. Oliveira preserving the Reaper for now. Very important to keep that alive, because that's your one scout on the Protoss side of the map. And it's really important to see when the Protoss takes a third base. Tells you so much about what your goal is in the game. Widowmine's building. Now, this could be bad for Oliveira. If he goes Widowmine drop into Phoenix, that's never a good choice. But it's Oracle, which means Oracle into Blink is more likely here for Hero. Adept still stationed on position. Oliveira's like, dude, can you please let me scout your tech? And that Oracle, if it sees the Reaper, if they cross paths, he will just turn the laser on to remove Oliveira's map vision. Otherwise, he'll try to sneak it across the map and... Interesting. Widowmine just burrows there. Adept lets it in the base. Oh, I think that might have been uh, uh, on purpose for Oliveira. I think he might have been trying to let the Adept Shade finish just so he could blow it up, because that's such a weird Widow Mine positioning. It's not even properly hidden behind the factory. Phoenix are now on the way. The first one is building, and that medevac has started. Oracle's flying across the map. Looks like the Reaper. Did it go down? No, it's still out on this map. I don't... No, it did die. Looks like the Adepts must have killed it. Oracle comes in. The Adept Shade in to try and tank some damage. Ooh, good micro by Oliveira. He loses one marine there, maybe two. Doesn't lose any SCVs. The Oracle's trying to get out of there. It will survive, which is important, keeping his detection and vision going. Four marine widow mine drop counterattack here. Doesn't bring the second widow mine, which is interesting. Not sure why that is. Two more adepts are coming in. Still got the widow mine in the main base. Looks like it has a kill, actually. Oh, the Oracle flew back into the widow mine, guys. Sorry, I missed that. There was a lot going on. I was trying to figure out where the widow mine was and watching these adepts at the same time. Oracle flew back in, died to the widow mine. Adepts go in. They get two SCVs for an adept. Not a bad trade. But what has he got to defend at home? Two Phoenix, and that's it. He's got no units here, man. No shield battery in the main either. No! The widow mine! Oh my god, six probes are already going down. And he just says, cool, that's the damage I want. Let's just get out of there. The Phoenix is going to try to hunt this down. Only three Marines inside this medevac, which is not a lot. The Phoenix can hunt it down, but he's lost track of it. Oliveira's going to get in and get out. Those six probes are delicious. Look at the units lost tab. Well in Oliveira's favor. He's going three barracks. He's going for the reactors now. He doesn't need any siege tanks because he knows there's no threat of Blink Stalkers jumping into his main base. He realizes, yep, this is going to be probably a Colossus transition behind this. He doesn't technically know that since he didn't see the gases or the Robo or the Robo Bay. But he can probably read into that. It's very rare that Hero goes for Phoenix Charge Lot. Alright, Phoenix going to pull back out of vision. Nice micro by Hero. Picks off a few SCVs, but oh, he loses a, a Phoenix there. And man, this is not a good start for Hero, guys. He's lost a Phoenix. One of them's been quite damaged. And uh, this Widowmine is the MVP of Oliveira's team right now. That Widowmine has killed an Oracle and uh, assisted in a Phoenix kill as well. If it can get another one of these down, that'll be massive. Here we go. 
Gateways are going to be going down. Extra gateways coming in. He's already got a quick third, does here. He can bounce back economically given enough time. And he's going Colossus, which is, of course, fantastic versus Bio Mine. Now, you might think, why do people not build tanks and Vikings early up against Colossus? But what you've got to realize is, in the open, unsupported, Colossus will still drop to Marauders just as easily as anything else. It's only big balls of Marines that really get punished by the Colossus super hard. Oh my god, Hero, another Phoenix goes down. Really lazy control. Hero is playing so chaotically right now. This is really, really bad stuff, and this push is so hard to stop. I mean, it, it, there's going to be like one Colossus on the field. A second one isn't going to be here for another 40 seconds. This is so hard for Hero to defend. He's got a Colossus, an Immortal, a Sentry, a Zealot, and three Phoenix. This is a disaster of an opening for him. The Cyclone even escapes. And remember, Oliver can just multi-prong. He could pick up and Doom Drop the main. If your Colossus aren't there, because they're so slow compared to Stim, Bio, and Drops, then you end up in a lot of trouble. And yeah, he's going to veer to the left and look for that potential Doom Drop reposition. Hero is setting up a proxy gate. Oh! Hero's cut probes. It's a fake third. It's a fake third. Guys, Hero wants to defend a push and then counterattack with three Colossus. He knows he can't afford a warp prism. He might even just go now with two. Two Colossus and sentries. The thing is, if Oliveira base trades, that's the counter to this. Why fight your opponent's Colossus army front on? Oh, he didn't find it. He didn't find it. Hero regroups. He misses the triple drop. This is a big all in. Hero knew he was far behind. He doesn't have time to get a Twilight Council on a Forge. He's just going to go for the big Colossus Sentry all in. He, oh, Oliveira, though, senses that he scans that third, has next to no units. He actually just is going for some nice multi-prong himself. And if he can try to pull up his main and defend that high ground, he'll be in a good spot. The bio does way more damage than a Colossus Sentry army does. These units aren't made for killing buildings. They kill Marines and they kill SCVs okay, but they don't actually crack the production that quickly. Probes are pulling across the map. Hero preparing for the base trade right now. The next eye are getting focused down. Oliveira is going to try to lift the command center off and get it out of there. I uh, can't really get anything more out of this main base. You could get some Vikings and rally them to the edge. That would be pretty huge. But I think lifting the buildings and floating them away is probably your best call. Here we go. Taking down the last Nexus. There's a Nexus building in the natural of Oliveira. So Hero is going to try to take that one. Interesting. And he's actually got enough Phoenix. Six Phoenix and some Stalkers. He can take down some of this. Third Command Center is going to have to get cancelled. That orbital goes down. Uh-oh. Oliveira has to start worrying about this base trade. He has 33 SCVs. He's got some of them on the map. A lot of them are still stuck in the main hiding there. Base. Hero, he sees them. Hero should move those Colossus forward and clear those up as quickly as possible. That orbital is getting focus fired. Oh no. Oh no. There is enough money to rebuild a command center, but it feels like Oliveira not going to get that much production out of here. He's still up in army supply. He's still got a very scary army. Mass repair comes in. The command center gets saved. Nice move. Almost gets a phoenix down there as well. Third command center does not get canceled. That's a bit of a bummer for Oliveira. That goes down. Minus 400 minerals. The SCVs are still cowering in the main. Hero has not dealt with them. Even just as raw hit point units to be pulled into a big fight, they could be effective. What I'm actually hoping for right now is both players rebuild, and at some point, Hero pushes him, and these SCVs come in and attack the probes, and we have an SCV versus probe fight. That's what I want to see in this game. Still, only five Marauders, mostly Marines and Widow Mines. Very weak to Colossus here. A few SCVs get picked off. He needs Vikings to deal with those Colossus. And he's going to go for the base trade as Oliveira. Widow Mines doing what they can. Uh-oh. Colossus and the sentries are such a big problem for him. He's just going to go for the base trade. Hero, he doesn't have any probes on the map, guys. Oh no, Hero doesn't have any probes on the map. Oh my god, the SCVs block him. They're not mineral walking. He says, no escape for you, you dirty Protoss scum. And uh, I think that's going to be enough. The Widow Mine from the early game is still there, by the way. What an absolute savage. No, it isn't. It's a different Widow Mine. Never mind. Phoenix picking things up. Hero is going to lose the base trade there. He, he was in a worse position. All that production escaping. All those... SCVs and stuff could have caused him trouble as well. Oliveira takes it. Map one after a stunning early game. All right, guys. Game one was a hot mess for Hero. Oracle didn't get much done. Then it died to the Widow Mine. Phoenix started dying and dropping like flies. Oliveira was all over that game one. That was a very good start for him. And he set up the multi prong really nicely to avoid fighting the Colossus front on. Those Colossus and, and Force Fields, they're so good in a frontal fight. And uh, Oliveira knew, even though he didn't know that Olive, uh, Hero was going to go for the push, even defensively, he's like, well, I can stim into Force Fields and Colossus and lose my army, or I can split up, attack two places. What are you going to do? I have one Colossus and one Sentry in the main, I'll just drop on top of it. One Colossus, one Sentry at the third, I'll just stim on top of it. You know, it doesn't... It's it's hard for Hero to keep up in that scenario. Now, Hero starts the Zealot, 
That's the in case you're engineering bay bay blocking me zealot. He sees no eBay, cancels it, starts the Nexus. Thanks for the Bezos box. Hey, thanks for the subs, guys. Sorry, I didn't realize I had those sound effects still on. Appreciate that. Give you guys some proper props after this game. Some proper props. Marine into Quick Factory on one base. Whoa. Oliveira. Guys, this man has a naughty plan for us. Now, you might be wondering, what's so special? Well, if you skip the Reaper, your factory gets down extra fast. Widow mine, one base armory, Widow mine drop, one base Hellion drop. Usually it's something in that realm. Notice he hasn't pulled off gas. I am pretty sure this is an armory widow mine drop, but it could, excuse me, also be something like the four Hellion, uh, or two, or yeah, four Hellion, four widow mine dive. He's going for a tech lab. Oliveira, what do you have in store? Is he going for a classic one, one, one? Is Oliveira pulling out a marine tank all in? Oh my god, if he does, this will be so fascinating to watch. It's not as good on this map because there's a ramp. It's actually a very bad map for it. Oh yeah, this is a very bad map. He's going to have to rely on a medevac or a liberator to spot the high ground. It still can work really well. Actually, you know, I said it's really bad. This choke point's really hard to get down to get at the siege tank. So arguably it works better for the, the Terran as well. Now it's a Twilight Council opening, which is not good versus this. But if you get a Dark Shrine up, that can be very good. This is a classic build from Oliveira. I mean, this is something you could probably do every matchup, every game, all the way to Grandmaster on the ladder. But if your opponent knows it's coming, it does not work. Luckily, Hero doesn't scout. Hero is the Beyond of Protoss. This man very rarely scouts recently in his PVT. He just is like, yeah, whatever, I'll just do my build, it's fine. Two gate, blink, robo, easy peasy. Now, if he goes for four gates, that's gonna give him a better chance. Those Marines need to move out though. So the whole light, oh, he's gonna open with a Marine drop. Okay, so he goes Marine drop and then he joins it up with the tanks, Marines and Vikings that start moving across the map. Now, the reason he builds a Viking is because you don't have enough Liberator for tank, uh, gas, sorry, for Liberator and tank production at the same time. Remember though, Liberators are only 125 gas. He's gonna bring four SCVs. You have to build bunkers and repair your units with this build as well. Marine drop at the front. Those Adepts have a shield battery. They should be able to defend this just fine. Oliveira just kind of poking at the front. Unable to really get any damage done. That's a very quick drop, which already should tell Hero some crazy stuff's happening. Hero going for gas, not the play right now. Hero, you need to be chrono boost to get immortal. Hero doesn't seem to realize. He's like, oh yeah, it's just a drop. That was a three minute 50 drop at your natural. That's a very early drop. You should realize something's up. Hero does, his alarm bells are not ringing. Oh, no, 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 no. This is very scary. Okay, Hero is gonna need to show us his best adaptation. If that shield battery gets focused down, he might just die. He's warping in Stalkers right now. Blink is not quite ready. If he loses this pylon, he loses the game because he will not have Blink then. The Marines are fighting. The Stalkers do take a big volley from the tanks and oh my God, Artosis! Oh no! The Artosis pylon falls. Hero is dead. And his lack of scouting punished a big gamble by Oliveira, but punishing Hero for his lack of scouting. Ouch. Map three. Hero now needs to win three games in a row. He's found himself down in the dumpster. And you know what, guys? This is where a sane person goes and scouts after building a gateway. But this is Hero, so let's find out. Let's find out. Does Hero want to scout? That is not placed correctly. Oh my god! The hero wall off meme continues. At least he realized that time and then placed it correctly on the second try after having to cancel it. And he is going to scout. Hero has decided, I don't want to lose 3-0 to a dumb, silly cheese. Um, definitely not a good start. Having to cancel the gateway, you know, throw away a little bit of minerals, delays the gateway as well, which delays your cyber core. So uh, not, not the best situation, but he's come back from this before many times. And Oliveira, good attention to detail, pulls that SCV to the inside of the refinery before starts mining. Very nice attention to detail for him. Single gas opening, looks like a, a standard expand build. Hero scouting this, he's going to go for a little bit of probe harass. Hero is definitely in the class of people who can win three games in a row. People are talking about that in the chat right now, and he's done it before, but... <laughs> The problem is that Oliveira is very good at just committing to sharp timing attacks. Like, he'll have a solid opening, good defense, and then he'll just come across and kill you. So he's many times before just surprised Hero with an attack and got the victory. Great denial on the command center, though. Did delay that a lot. It's well played by Hero so far. 
Uh, Cybercore into Nexus, second pylon and the second gas all there, and uh, pretty decent opening despite that delay on the gateway. Reaper's going to come forward, Marine comes out, and do we see a second barracks or a factory? Factory is the standard here, of course. And there we go. It is going to be that factory going down. Chrono boosting into depth so far. Warp gate starts up. If Hero cancels that and builds a Stargate, that would be okay, but it does look more like a Twilight Council opening to me. Second Adept queued up already. Do we see a second Chrono on that? Are we going to do the three Adept pressure? Looks like the answer is no. Twilight Council goes down. Reaper's actually just looking for proxies. Oliveira not pressuring with that. And it makes sense. On this map, it's actually really hard to even get a Reaper in the enemy base. I feel like Reaper's actually very weak on Neo Humanity because they always wall this off, usually with a Cyber Core. In this case, with a Gateway. It's easy single building wall off. The front is really narrow and there's no jumping path. Wait, can you jump? I don't think you can jump there, can you guys? Let me know. That doesn't look like it. it. Looks like there's some kind of building stuff that's in the way. I'm pretty sure you can't jump in and out over there. Otherwise, we'd see Terran scouting up through the back of the Protoss base a lot more often. Uh, looks like a second barracks is on the way in the very back. So Oliver is going towards the classic factory into multiple barracks play. Popularized this over at Katowice. A lot of players emulated it after seeing him do it there. Coffee special. Question is, do we see a third barracks? Or does he go for the Beyond style where you get the quick engineering bay after this? Adept shading up on top of the ramp right now. No actual damage, just a bit of lost mining time. And he dropped the mules on the high ground. So he's not really losing anything. This is why if you guys are doing an opening like this where you're a bit light on units during this period, never drop that first mule on the natural. Always drop your first couple mules in the main. And then once you've got a good pack of marines out, cyclone or a helion, that's when you can move out forwards. Forward pylon. Whoa, what is this? Is Hero going 4-gate blink with a proxy? Usually, if you've got the prism, you just wait for the, the, the uh, war prism to get over there out of that robo. This is interesting. Reaper's going to come in. Adepts are on top of him. So if he has to get out of there, you can take two Adept shots, but you can't take a third. Interesting that he didn't cancel the pylon. The Cyclone can clean that up right now, but he's got to do it right now. Oh, Oliveira, careful, mate. Okay, he's going to lose the Reaper, but he'll kill a Cyclone for it. Uh, and adept for it and maybe even two. Oh my god huge mistake huge mistake oh damn throws those adepts away it's three gate blink it's not four gate the pylon's gonna go down as well this is a good start for Oliveira, guys look at that unit's lost that perfect game for him he's gonna find the probe on the right side as well looks like that's coming back in to build another proxy wait he still builds it okay hero is actually drunk at this point guys what is he doing why is he still building pylons on the front? Is this just to pretend he's being aggressive? He doesn't have a third base up. I'm very confused by what Hero is trying to do in this game. He's coming in here. Wait, you, what? He clicks on the cycle. What are you? Absolute madman. The stalker's getting heavily bruised to click on a stalker uh, or on a cyclone. Hero is now going to take a fourth gas. I and mean, this is a disastrous opening for Hero so far because he's got no economy and Oliveira knows it. He knows there's no third base. Oliveira can just keep pumping out units. His third barracks is very late. That's the one weakness of Oliveira's style. He did go for the engineering bay in the starport that I talked about. His third gas is maybe a little bit late. We can criticize that. I love this semi-depot wall. If you blink across there, there's no escape once that last depot seals the gap. Tank and marines in the main as well. So no more damage can be done. Hero has to go storm. Okay, so Hero right now is down 0-2. He's far behind in this game economically. The army is going to outscale his massively. And he's saying, well, I'm already behind. If I take a third, I'm screwed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make charge. I'm going to make storm. And basically, we're going to do a storm drop on top of his army when he moves out and jump on him with zealots. And if we get the best storms of all time, I can still win this game. And anyone out there who's a sane Protoss says, that sounds like a massive gamble. And there's going to be so much terror. You will need, like, not just good storms. You will need amazing storms. Hero, though, says, well, I can, I can actually get a bit of value. Finally, he gets some harassment in gonna take out three scvs unfortunately didn't focus down the fourth and the fifth cyclone can get him there oh hero hero oh my god oh my god okay he takes some damage but a good recall there Whew. if he lost that that would have been 10 supply and a lot of minerals going down the bank down the drain sorry high templar he's got one high templar out make it two those two high templar maybe make a third one it's all about them because Third command center is pretty late, but man, this bio army is massive. With the first two medevacs coming out, you know Oliveira is moving out. You got nothing to deal with that. It is such a big army. I mean, he's got six zealots, nine stalkers, and an immortal. He's going to go for a second immortal here as well. 
Two base Protoss does not have a lot of longevity, but Oliveira is blind. That is Oliveira's big weakness. He's, he's blind. He's moving forward in a clump. This is exactly what you need for those storms to land. Where is that prism? I think he was thinking about harassing with it. He still doesn't see the army. Okay, he sees it now. He needs to get in there with that prism. Okay, the army needs to gather up. Hero needs to get out the front of this base right now. If he can land these storms, crush this army, he could get back in this game. He needs the fight to end all fights, though. Storm coming in from behind. The bio stutter steps forward. They take out the High Templar. Storms do land pretty big. Decent spready, though, from Oliveira. Stalkers and Zealots coming forward. Actually, a good fight for Hero. Does lose all of his High Templar. But the Prism Micro on the Stalkers keeping so many of them alive. And he does manage to hold on against that push. Beautiful hold by Hero. And Oliveira scans and realizes, wait, does he not have a third base? Oliveira is realizing at this point, wait, he was two base this whole time. Oh, crap. If I just kept those units alive and built up a bigger army, there's no way to lose this game. But now he's traded with me. Now we're back on relatively even footing. That's kind of frustrating. Oliveira has a third orbital coming up. He's going to pick off a Stalker if he can. Gets one of them for a Marine. That was a good trade. If he could get one more, that would be fantastic. Three High Templar inside a Warp Prism. And that timing attack could be incoming. Surely he's not going to ferry into the main base, is he? Double Immortal Drop on the main? Oh my god. If you can get the Cyclone, that's kind of the ranged anti-air right now. The Marauders, he gets a Marauder, picks up, pulls to the low ground, gets a Marine. Nice micro by Hero. Hero still has not got a third base, though. Scan, sees more Stalkers warping in. Widow Mines, nice spready. The Zealots take out those first Widow Mines. He's going to drop High Templar, get some good zoning storms. Good spreadies by Oliveira to avoid the worst of it. He doesn't repair the bunker in time. Oh no, Oliveira didn't repair the bunker. Oh no. I mean, I know Storm is good against repairing SCVs, but if he gets overwhelmed, that'd be crazy. The SCVs are being forced to fight. The Archon does go down pretty quickly. A lot of SCVs are falling, but Hero's losing his entire army. This is a crazy situation. There's just no Marauders left. The Immortals were focus firing them. Notice how those Immortals kept focus firing the Immortals. Massive, massive plays. That Widow Mine goes down before it can fire. Hero with a crazy two-base Storm. Immortal Zealot Stalker play has found a way to drag his ass back into this game. And I say drag his ass because that was a heavyweight. I'm telling you, that was some badonka donk opening. That was like a big, big, big fat bummer of an opening for PVT. And yeah, Hero has found a way to get back in it with that characteristic, just weird play. Two base storm. Oliveira's lack of scouting being punished here. Hero is as ever unpredictable. Just when you're counting on him doing the standard thing and trying to catch up economically on a third base, he masses units on two base, ambushes you, and messes you up. Apparently I said the Immortals were focus firing the Immortals. Yeah, the Terran Immortal. You guys know. The Terran Immortal. The Ultra Criminal with the Punisher Grenades. You guys know what they're called. The Armored Guys. Mara Mar Marauders? Marauders. The uh, annoying guys to fight in uh, Doom. Uh, Eternal. Oh my god, too many Zealots. Way too many Zealots. The Widow Mine's gonna get that hit. The Marines, the Vikings, the Marauders doing what they can. The SCVs are pulled off the line, but there's enough Zealots in there. High Templar don't quite have energy. He drops them to check the energy, picks it back up. And it's almost sliced on time. Not just yet, but almost. Oliveira's gotta be annoyed. This early game was so slick for him, man. But Storm's landing, blanketing, and that's gonna be that. Oliveira unable to get the 3-0 despite outplaying Hero in the early game. Hero catches him off guard. Great ambush. All right, guys, let's go. Hero in the top left, starting the comeback train. If he can just have a not terrible opening, that would be pretty nice. He is going to scout again. Still not wanting to take any risks. And Oliveira says, ah, screw going for an expand. I don't like being put in that dark, shadowy corner with no information. I'm going to play double gas this time and get a bit more momentum. Ooh, good. Okay, this is not safe. That guy's two hits from death. So one of my tricks, I like to pull an SCV out to intercept it. Because if you're going to waste an SCV's time chasing it, guys, a good trick there is if you pull an SCV off the middle of the middle patch, you get a hit on it, and you put this guy back to mining. And that way, you don't end up in this scenario where that probe is back on full shield so quickly. And it costs you exactly the same mining time. It literally only costs you APM. Um, which obviously these pro, pro, pro players have in abundance. But no one really does it other than me. It is what it is. We've actually just been having a little conversation... Um, in between the games on my live stream. So for those watching on YouTube, I think this is an interesting bit of trivia during the early game when not much is happening to share with you all. I wanted to find out what is McDonald's called wherever you are in the world. Apparently it's just called Mac in Ukraine. <laughs> uh, someone said it's called, uh, we know Mickey D's, I know that one. French Canadians call it Macdo. I'm probably mispronouncing that, Macdo. The double arches for some people. 
uh, Rotten Ronnies, apparently. I don't know where that they call it that, but apparently that's what someone calls it. Uh, Messies in Germany? Messes? Meckers? I don't know how... You, it's like M-E-C-C-E-S. I don't know how you say that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, McDonald's is the Aussie way of saying... Uh, Maccas, sorry. M-A-C-C-A-S. Maccas is the Aussie way of saying it, guys. Or just straight up Donnie's is another one as well, apparently. Anyway, fun discussion. Always like hearing what the different names are. Macna or Mackie or Macy's. We're going to go down to Macy's. Hard C's, the, the German one. Meckies. Meckies. Meckers. Not too bad. So it's almost Meckers. It's basically the same thing. All right. Reaper, unable to scout, guys. Let's uh, focus on the game. Twilight Council's there. Two Adepts are out. Showing two Adepts while going Twilight is good because it gives off the impression that you're playing Stargate or could be. If you're playing Stargate, you don't really afford gas for Stalkers early on. So if you can hide the fact that you're building a Stalker and uh, use these Adepts to deny the Twilight getting spotted, Oliveira may go into this assuming that this is a Stargate build. Now as it is, he's going a Medivac and a Widow Mine anyway, or a second Widow Mine. Pretty standard play. Oh, I didn't realize you can actually see the gateway from there. He ran forward and he saw that gateway. Very nice. Little bit of knowledge is that you can go there to see if they build a gateway on the front. That might alone tell him this is indeed a Blink Robo opening. Widow Mine drops pretty good against this. Third gateway goes down. So Hero's been enjoying the three gate blink lately, not quite the four gate blink. This Widow Mine's kind of scouting here. He will see the Adept. Ah, that's unfortunate. Oliver, you're gonna, you're always a bit late. Oh my God. Okay, barely keeps it alive. That Widow Mine. Oh, Hero. Oh, Hero timing that perfectly for the Shade Dodge. Gets the Widow Mine to track on him. And just when it was about to connect with the Adept, he manages to complete the shade. Slick move. I don't see people pulling that off very often these days. It's very hard to get the timing just right. The, the last few times I've tried to do that, I've messed up the timing. And I think I got annoyed at myself and stopped doing it. The going to sacrifice itself here. The Marines did get a bit of mining time. He wants to move away from the shield battery on the natural. So Oliver moves up into the main base. Would have been cool if he saved the Widow Mine into the medevac during that. He's going to get a few probes, but he's committed deep now. I think he might have to just stay in there. Oh, he actually gets out with four Marines. Not bad, guys. Four probes and an adept. Does lose the Widow Mines, but a good bit of distraction. And he's expecting Hero to immediately counterattack. Oh, so he's making a hard read. He thinks Hero's going to immediately counterattack. So he's like, haha, I'll go back in and kill a few probes because he's out on the map now. And Oliveira makes a hard read. It was a gambly hard read. Luckily for him, Blink isn't ready. Yes, it is. Oh my God. Oliveira plays a little bit risky and gets punished. Hero just barely gets that Blink in time and shuts it down. Very nice play by Hero here. And Oliveira getting a little cheeky in this early game. Hero comes out on top. Now, Hero is once again doing a bizarre build order, guys. He's got four gas on two base, no third base in sight. He's going forward for a three gate blink pressure. I mean, his, his economic and tech progression sucks. The bunker wasn't ready. Maybe that's why he feels confident doing this. There's not that many Marines either. There is a Viking and a Raven, but if this tank goes down, he's in the doo-doo. Oliveira needs to get back in the main with all these Marines right now. Oh no, get out of there, get out of there, Oliveira. Oh no, he loses the Viking and the Raven instantly. Ooh, not a single Stalker went down there, guys. And look at that, Hero's gonna immediately go for the pressure. He's gonna go Stalker drop. And he's actually gonna think about Stalker dropping the natural, maybe. Okay, these Stalker's gonna blink away. He's gonna move back over. He's gonna go Templar Archives and Mass Gateways. That is such a slow Templar Archives. Hero's builds are so disorganized. Like, you could tell he's making this up as he goes. I, I don't know. <laughs> He could have already been into Storm, surely. But uh, he's actually getting a fair bit of damage done. I mean, that tank isn't covering this the right side. You're going to have to pull the SCVs. If Oliveira doesn't pull the SCVs, he'll lose a lot of them. Stalkers blink forward anyway. And nice hot pickups here. Does pick off, I think, one SCV and one Marine. Units lost have looking very good for Hero in this game. Oh, he's even going to pick off a few more Marines. I think Oliveira probably thought he was done here. He's like, yeah, yeah, you'll leave now. It looks away. It looks back. Half of his Marines are dead. Just a hero's fantastic control. Three to one units lost ratio. That is insane. And he's once again just playing two base Immortal Storm. He's like, yeah, no worries. The thing is, Oliveira can just turtle it up and survive this. It's very hard to break them in a defensive position. But, oh, hero has all the vision, though. So he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna make High Templar. And I feel like if he just like busts the bunker and kills this tank before the rest of the units get down there, that alone could be game changing. Stim and shields will be ready in time, of course, for this storm. 
But what a committed play this is for Hero. I mean, Oliveira just has no vision. He has no scouting. Losing the Raven was a disaster because now the Observer sees what's going on. Does see a third command center. Hero realizes Oliveira is intent on just turtling. He doesn't want to make the same mistake as the last game. You think you're safe here, though, with a bunker and a tank. You are not. This man is a savage. Psystorm is about to complete. 45 probe. Seven and a half minute. 14 zealots. Four eye Templar with Storm. Get out of there, Oliveira. Spread. SCV repair. Oh, he stops the high Templar from dropping. But they're going to get on the high ground. Careful. He does cop a big storm. He didn't get the mass repair up in time. And oh my god, that is a lot of Protoss. Oh my god. He ends up storming his own zealots more than anything on that last one. But... There's just no units left for Oliveira. He's outgunned. He's out, man. He's making upgrades. He's making fourth and fifth barracks, extra add-ons, third command centers, extra depots, extra SCVs, all the things for the long game. Hero says long game? <laughs> nah, mate. Ties up the series two to two. He's back in it. He's forced to game five. All right, guys, let's go. Game five, the decider. And this man is doing a Maca Rax. But wait, it's a Maca Gate? Hero is... I don't even know if I call this a proxy or it's just I'm hiding my gateway to freak you out. He is building his gateway forward on the map in a very weird position. Down to the bottom right side, we've got Oliveira. He is playing a bit more standard with the one racks. Oliveira has been way out in this series. He's got to keep his cool and finish this one off. Oliveira has been smashing face lately. He's been making it to a lot of finals, but several has been a nemesis for him in those Kung Fu Cups. If he can take down Hero here after this turnaround, this would be great, but <clears throat> it's hard. Hero has been just kind of catching him off uh, with the harassment and the style that he's playing. And it really comes down to the scouting. Like, Oliveira needs to be... I don't know if he has a coach with him. I don't know if he has anyone watching the games. If he does, they would tell him, don't don't overthink it. Just scout. That's all you need to do. You're, you're out playing Hero for the most part in the early stages. That last game, maybe not so good in the early game. But, you know, for the most part, you're doing well. Keep doing what you're doing. Just scout. Oliveira is not scouting. And this Zealot into a second Zealot before Cyber. He's chronoing the Zealots out as well. He's chronoing multiple Zealots in. So this is like a, a Max Pax build, but with the Gateway not so close to the enemy base. This is the Max Pax build, but the Gateway is just well hidden. Fascinating build order here. And he's hiding the Zealots. He's going to wait for the Reaper to come out. Okay, so Hero is saying, I know you're going to go Reaper. You're going to scout around for the proxy. And oh my god, look. And he even knows where he's going to scout to. The timing! Is this man a mind reader? How a hero? Okay, Oliveira, he is a creature of habit. I have noticed that he does like to do the same build over and over again. But a hero knew that down to the second. That is ridiculous. The Reaper is out of position. It's going to start going across the map now. It's obviously still nearby. But this, oh my god, he's going to get in there. Split a zealot onto that SCV. One goes up the ramp. That SCV gets stuck on the outside of the wall. Already two SCVs going down and the Adept going after the Reaper. That command center isolated. He's trying to build Marines and Aliens, but oh man, this is bad. Oliveira, I, I don't think he needs to build a bunker. You might want to build one, you know, a survival bunker, but that's not the key. The key... Oh, he canceled the command center. He canceled the command center. Oh no. He should be focusing the Adept if possible rather than the Zealot here. That Reaper, careful. You do not want to die there, but he's got a few Marines out as well. He's got to try to do some pullback micro on these SCVs. The Hellion's out. He should be okay. And it looks like a good defense by Oliveira, but the command center has not been rebuilt. Canceled the command center, spent the money on a bunker, a starport, all these other things. And as a result, he does not have a command center. The Nexus is finishing. This is the classic Max Pax, if he can get nice and far ahead with it. But normally you scout the Max Pax because it's much closer to your base. That's why we don't see that build very much because all the Terrans Reaper scout for it. Hero says, that's fine, I'll build it on my side of the map, hide the Zealots till the last second, let you commit till the command center is at 90% complete, and then I'll ruin your day. And that is so frustrating for Oliveira. Oliveira is going to go one base all in. Oliveira is going cloaked banshees, marines, and he'll be building tanks in a moment. He is going to try to counter one base all in to deal with this. He knows his command center is too far behind, but this is an interesting commitment by Hero. He dives on top. He says, you never expected me to fight you like this, did you? That Adept will go down to the Hellions. It's going to shade into the main base, no doubt. Yeah, it's going to shade in there. The SCVs are going to come and fight. He's trying to pull back the weak SCVs, but it's circling. It's hungry. Great micro. How did Oliveira select all the weak ones so smoothly? I don't even know. Cleans up that Adept, but guess what? That Adept just scouted. It did a full circuit, and Hero knows there's no third command center. So being an intelligent Protoss player, he's going to stop probing right now. He's going to stop probing right now and make nothing but fighting units. He's making a war prism. Hero, I know you're a crazy person. Why are you making probes in a war prism? Do you not look at your scouting? 
Hero, this is the easiest hold of all time if you chrono an immortal, make a shield battery. Hero, what are you doing? Oh my god, this man just does not look at his scouting some games. He's still in a good position. I mean, obviously, Oliveira's position is so bad. I'm, I'm shouting at Hiro because I cannot believe he would be so disrespectful of his own scouting information. This is absolutely bananas. He'll defend the Banshee just fine. Luckily, there's no tank with this just yet. These tanks are really far behind. Dude, if Oliveira just went and started building bunkers with a tank and a Banshee all together... Hero wouldn't be able to stop it. Hero now builds a shield battery and more probes. He's still not building an immortal. The absolute goal of this man. The goal. It's a one base all in and he's taking more gases and probes. My god. <laughs> he just did not pay attention with the adept guys. This is like, for those, does anyone remember Hero vs. Bunny at Atlanta? When he scouted, he basically was like, oh, you're completely all in. And then he dropped, he went triple forge and started trying to take gases and probe up his fifth base. And he knew there was an SCV pool coming. And everyone was like, are you crazy? Hero was like, yeah, I'm actually insane. Like, I don't know what's going on in Hero's brain. You know how it's like, uh, doesn't Homer, Homer Simpson has like a bloody a couple of monkeys with symbols banging in his brain. Hero just has a, a bunch of clowns babbling like a psychopath. He's far enough ahead off the opening. I don't think it matters. He's got a lot of stalkers. They don't have blink though. They aren't as microable. Oh man, he's got the, luckily he does have a lot of those units though. The shield battery overcharge isn't quite in range of most of them. If he gets rid of the tanks though, that doesn't, that's enough. He gets rid of one tank. If he can get rid of the other one, this is all over for Oliveira. He doesn't have a bunker. He doesn't have any sustainability. It's all about the Banshees and the Mass Repair. If he can get a bunker up, maybe, just maybe, but with Shield Battery and Mortal Stalker off 3-gate, this is a huge amount of production. And remember, the Proxy Gate never got found or taken out. That Proxy Gate is still part of his production. One of the weaknesses of this build being removed by Hero's very clever execution of it, he's now got double Immortal Drop, which he can just flank and drop on top of the Siege Tanks whenever he feels like it. Those Immortals will make quick work of those Siege Tanks, man. The tanks are quite far forward. If he can come around and drop those Immortals on the flank, it's an easy hold. He's just going to go for it. A big spready. eBay tries to go down to the front line. Oliveira's special move to try and block things. The Banshees are actually beating his Stalkers, but he gets rid of the tanks, and that is all he needs to do. Oliveira has to tap out. Hero likes to give me a heart attack by not doing basic, standard, obvious responses. But at the end of the day, he was down 0-2. He makes a complete reversal, wins three games in a row, and continues to be an absolute savage. I cannot get over that move down here with the Zealots. The exact timing of that was actually crazy. I, there's got to be a bit of luck in there, but there's also, you have to pay off the man's instincts. Hero is a beast. He ends up winning KSL 13. GG, well played.